troubled my airline co-founder Dato Ellen Go Huan Hua and four companies are being sued by 15 investors over their alleged failure to pay monthly redemption value sums and financing returns from the investors outlay of about 8 million ringgit. However, Go along with the four companies named in the suit, iServe Online Mall, Bright Moon Venture, QA Smart Partnership and Trillion Cove Holdings have filed an application to strike out the suit on the basis that the legal action was a nullity and an abuse of court process. Go57 is a shareholder of ISOM and a director and shareholder of TCH. In their statement of claim dated July 21st last year, the investors claimed that all material times the companies were prompt and consistent in their monthly payments. However, the companies had failed to make the agreed upon monthly payments from November 2021 to June 2022, despite having been sent letters of demand by the plaintiff's solicitors. In court documents seen by The Edge, the plaintiff said failure to make payments was a breach of agreement and they are seeking their full investment amount as well as arrears of the monthly payments. The plaintiffs also claim that ISOM had made undertakings and representations expressly or by conduct that it is jointly liable with BMV, QAS and TCH to make the payouts on behalf of BMV, QAS and TCH. They claim that Go is the controlling mind of the defendants and cited notices, announcements and teleconferences organised by or under Go and ISOM's instructions regarding investments via BMV, QAS and TCH. The plaintiffs also noted that the payments to them stopped in November 2021, around the time that Bank Nagara had raided ISOM, TCH and other companies and subsequently frozen their bank accounts. The plaintiffs added that there is no freeze order against BMV or QAS. On Wednesday, the police confirmed that Go and two of his family members had been arrested and remanded for four days to facilitate investigations under the Anti-Money Laundering Act. Australia's Linus Rare Earth said on Friday that it plans to shut all operations in Malaysia on a temporary basis except a mixed earth rare carbonate processing plant in the December quarter with minimal volumes of the raw material processed during the interim shutdown, Reuters reports. Linus's Malaysian operations have been a sore point for the company with the Malaysian government raising concerns about the radiation levels from cracking and leaching for the last couple of years and PM Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim warning of a policy to ban exports of rare earth raw materials. It will implement an upgrade to its downstream operations at Linus Malaysia to increase the production of ninodymium praseodymium of about 10,500 metric tonnes per annum. This upgrade will be essential if the company's Malaysian operating licence is updated to allow the continued import and processing of lathanide concentrate, it said. During the short-term shutdown, which starts in mid-November to complete upgrading works, key personnel from the Malaysian crack and leaching plant will be deployed to assist with the startup process of its rare earth processing facility in Kagoli, Western Australia. Linus, whose operating license in Malaysia had been extended until January 2024, said its application for a stay to allow it to operate on a normal basis in Malaysia while administrative and legal appeals are heard and decided is listed for a hearing in November. Advanced projections show Malaysia's gross domestic product rose 3.3% year-on-year in the third quarter compared with 2.9% year-on-year in the second quarter, mainly driven by growth in the services sector, according to the Department of Statistics Malaysia. This is the first time the DOSM released its quarterly advanced GDP estimate, which is aimed at meeting the demand for timely macroeconomic statistics and providing valuable insights to policymakers and stakeholders in measuring recent economic conditions over a short Period. In a statement, Chief Statistician Dato Sri Dr. Mohamed Uzir Mahidin said that the computation of advanced GDP estimates is based on the availability of various data sources. According to him, the advanced GDP growth projection of 3.3% in the third quarter was supported by the services sector, which continued to steer the overall performance in the quarter with an increase of 5.1% from 4.7% in the second quarter. Meanwhile, Malaysia's headline inflation is measured 
measured by the Consumer Price Index, eased to a 1.9% growth in September 2023, according to the DOSM. This marks the first inflation growth below 2% in almost three years, a 1.7% growth recorded in March 2021. The headline inflation slid 2% month-on-month from August, marking the 12th consecutive month of decline since peaking at 4.7% in August 2022. Mohamed Uzer said the slow inflation growth was driven by lower increases in restaurants and hotels at 4.4% and food and non-alcoholic beverages at 3.9%. Commenting on inflation at the state level, Mohamed Uzer said 10 states-slash-federal territories recorded increases below the national inflation level of 1.9% versus 6 states-slash-federal territories which recorded increases above the national inflation level. Abu Dhabi State Fund, Mubadala Investment and Japanese oil and gas explorer Impex are among firms competing to acquire Sapporo OMV in a deal expected to be worth about 1.2 billion US dollars, according to two sources with direct knowledge, Reuters reports. Indonesian energy firm Medco Energy is also vying for Sapporo OMV, an equal joint venture of Sapporo Energy and Austria's OMV, with bids due this week, the sources added. They declined to be identified as the matter was private. Sapporo Energy declined to comment while OMV and Impex said they had no comment. Mubadala and Medco did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Sapporo OMV produced about 30,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day from its two Malaysian assets, SK310B15 and SK408, Goret, Lara and Pakong, Sapporo Energy said in its latest annual report for FY 2023. The planned stake divestment would help bring in fresh capital where pairing debt, Sapporo Energy said in the report. With exploration interests in Australia, Mexico and New Zealand, Sapporo OMV targets production of 10,000 KBOEPD through organic growth and M&A activity over the next five to eight years. In November 2018, OMV said it was investing up to 975 million US dollars for its 50% share of the equity in Sapporo OMV in a deal intended to springboard its Asia expansion. My EG Services expects to complete the system enhancement for its immigration-related services within one month. The enhancement is aimed at integrating the group's existing system with a new system from the Immigration Department, with the total cost expected to be less than $5 million, the e-government service provider said in a filing on Friday. When queried by Bursa Malaysia on the timeline to complete the system enhancement, My EG said that the timeline given by the Ministry of Home Affairs is three months, but the company estimates of that system enhancement will be completed completed within a month from the date of the letter of acceptance. The LOA was dated October 16th. The group added that the immigration-related services will commence immediately upon completion of the enhancement. However, MyEG said it is unable to specify the expected date of signing of the agreement to formalise the two-year extension, but based on past precedents, it may take at least 12 months. Apart from the requirement to complete the system enhancement, MyEG said the Home Ministry had imposed two additional specific conditions in the LOA, which involved furnishing a performance bond of 457920 and implementing a program under professional training and education for growing entrepreneurs. My EG also confirmed that the Ministry of Finance had approved the extension before the Home Ministry issued the LOA. The extension is subject to renewal upon expiry after two years. <music> 